Hey everyone, well I did it. I finally got a vacuum chamber that can fit a human. Devossi sent me this giant vacuum chamber. They even put my Action Lab logo on it. It's so cool. It was a beast to get into my lab though. <laughs> it is giant. Holy cow, it came in a 630 pound crate. So there are a lot of things I wanna test in this, but let's start off with one of my favorites that I haven't been able to test yet. Can rockets really fly in space? Let's see if we can build a rocket that can fly in the vacuum chamber. So in order to do this, first we need some fuel that can burn in a vacuum. But what do we need to get this fuel? Money. Whoa. <laughs> you might have guessed that wasn't real money. But what it actually was made of is nitrocellulose, or flash paper. So flash paper like this is made by mixing nitric acid with cellulose, and it makes this extremely flammable paper. <laughs> Magicians frequently use this because it can go up in flames, and there's no residue left over. You don't see any ashes, and it goes up really fast. <laughs> it's really bright, too. But one of the coolest things about flash paper is that it doesn't need oxygen to burn. It can burn without oxygen because there's enough oxygen within the molecule itself. So first let's test if it really does ignite in a vacuum. Let's pump this down as low as it can go. Uh, well anyway, I think we should uh, save the best bit for the video, you know, oh, well, yeah. rather than watch it all the way through at the intro, you know. Yeah. I like how he says that he's going to, so let's build a rocket and fly it in a vacuum. And I'm thinking, is he, how's he going to build a rocket? I don't, I, don't know. Vacuum. I, don't, I don't know, you know, maybe he's, maybe he's, maybe he's going to build a model rocket or something that simulates a rocket. Oh, right, okay. Right. <clears throat> yeah, that'd be the best thing. So he should have said, I'm going, let's simulate a rocket. <clears throat> yeah, let, let's simulate a rocket and see if we can get it to move in my new vacuum in chamber. chamber. Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do and you can still be stupid. Yes. Yeah, well, we're back again, annoying people with our views and opinions because, 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 because. Action Lab dislikes hearing other people's views and opinions. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, he's, he probably does, you know. I mean, I, c I could have been with him in his little lab. In his, in his Action Lab. In his Action Lab. Because well, it's all happening in his Action Lab. Well, there's only him in it. Why well, can it be an Action Lab? Well, I don't know, yeah, there's only him. If it, if it was filled with about 20 people all busy working away, oh, well, you know, yeah. then it could be called Action or, Lab. Or justified to be called Action, action lab. lab. But there's only him in it. Oh, right. Yeah. And it's probably his garage. Action Garage. Oh, right, Action Garage. Yeah. But then, do you think he's an active kind of guy? Not really, no. Can you imagine him, um, I don't know, doing active sports? Yeah, I've got, I've, you yeah. know, I've got to admit, it, it is funny, because the way he comes out with, with his flash paper and goes, whoa, isn't that cool? And whoa, isn't that, oh, this is so <laughs> cool. Oh, look cool. At, look <laughs> at my nice new vacuum chamber that uh, De Blossi or whoever have sent him. Oh, look, look at the crate, it's coming, oh, look at this. Oh, it's so big, coming in a 600 pound crate. The thing that really annoys me about people like that, and that is they're, they're so distant to real life. In what way? In the way that, let's, I mean, you know, let's hope it doesn't happen, but if one of his family members, close family members, was touched by cancer, Oh yeah, sure, yeah. Oh, look at that lovely piece of cancer that we can see on the TV Oh yeah, I wonder, if, I wonder if... Isn't that cool? Oh yeah, sure. Whoa, oh, I, haven't, I wonder if they've actually worked out the molecules in cancer. Oh right, in a yeah. Cancer, yeah. So the molecules. The chemical composition. The, the chemical composition oh, right, of a yeah. cancerous cell, cell you know. Yeah. A big, a tumour. You yeah, know, you've no, got this yeah. tumour, okay, you've cut it out from someone's gut. And then you basically, what you can do, you can work out the molecular structure structure of this cancerous growth. I mean, where is it? Yeah, where is it? Yeah. Where is it? What is it? Two parts oxygen, seven parts carbon. Oh, right. Yeah. What? Yeah. And some unknown stuff because they don't really know what cancer is or how it how it forms well, and it's how decay. it. It's well, it's decay. decay. Okay. okay. Thirty parts decay. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but he'll never do it. He'll never apply. Action Lab will never apply what he thinks in the real world. Yeah, I know, because it's always <laughs> in his lab. 
So oh, it's in his lab. Uh, it's in his garage. Now, and now it's in his vacuum chamber. Yeah, in his garage. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we're back again. And what we've got on... No, no, how are you, Peter? Are you well? Are you well? Or are you well? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. And we both hope you are all well too. Yeah, sure. Now, we've got uh, we've got a pretty all right of one today. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, our, our thing is, but we've got globe heads don't do perspective. Because after our last video where we put up our little diagrams and got into lots of discussions with globe we're, heads. We're beginning to realise. We, well, we've come to the conclusion that globe heads don't do perspective. They don't They don't take it into account no. of, of anything. Yeah. You know, they don't, they just don't literally take it into, into account. account. And you're trying to understand, you're, you know, you're trying to understand the real world that you live in, not, not an ant lives in or a shark or a snail, but the world you live in, okay, and the world you perceive, and yet someone's telling you, oh, it's, got no, it's nothing like that. Mm. It's like this, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, but this kind of re this supports the view that a lot of globe heads uh, offer confirmation bias. Absolutely, of course. When you discuss things with them, topics yeah. with them. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think whether whether you and I have uh, have ever been uh, biased in a conform confirming way. Um, whether we've done anything, I, d I don't think we have because we've been quite well. well we're, we're only transparent, but we're only challenging information. Yeah, we're we're challenging established information. You know, factual information, if you'd like mm. to call it that. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. call it factual at all. But a lot of people think that the Earth is definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, a globe. Mm. You know, they've done, they've carried out no tests. They've done fuck all to do with anything with the natural world. world yeah, but yeah, they yeah. Li they think. 120% that the Earth's a globe. globe yeah. I mean, yeah. how, how mad is... Yeah. And any bit of information that they find, okay, or they're challenged with, they will come back with a, um, a reply or a response that basically is biased and confirms their 120% understanding that the Earth is a globe. Or belief. Or belief. Well, it's, it's got to be... A, but no, to them, it's not a belief. It's real. But it is a belief. But yeah, but they don't see that. Mm, they, you know, yeah. these people, these globe heads, have got mental health, health problems. problems. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I can't see anyone um, mm. anyway. disputing that. Mm. Anyway, come of on. Course. But uh, so what have we got on for everyone's displeasure, dissatisfaction, and disenchantment for tonight then, Peter? <laughs> I was just wondering whether the, the globe, you could change the globe to something else, can't you? Knob <laughs> heads. The knob heads don't uh, do perspective. Yeah. Anyway, what we're going to look at, we're going to we're going to look at Action Lab, and look at what how not what, physically, obviously. Yeah, you know. we're not physically. We don't want to look at him physically. It'd be quite boring to look at. Do you not think Action Lab? Can you imagine working with him? You know, no. You'll find a lot of people find it difficult to work with him. That's why he does things. That's why he's got a YouTube channel. Mm. He's got his YouTube channel because maybe um, he got he got uh, he got kicked out of his last job. He, may he, well he didn't done, get on yeah. with the workers. Yeah, he may well have done. You don't know. Anyway, come on. And they all thought it was a bit of a dick. Or a globe head. Mm. Absolutely, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to have a look at a look at what he what he comes up with uh, as, as a rocket. Oh, his effort. His effort his to effort. prove... No, to, to... To confirm... To confirm his bias. His bias, yeah. His bias with regard to his world view. Yeah. We're going to have a look at... Because he's, bi he's biased. <clears throat> we're going to have yeah. a look at his test... His test to see how he confirms his bias. Absolutely, of course. We're going to have Which a look is at quite a good, uh, good thing, really. Uh, we're going to have a look. We're going to revisit 24-hour 24, 24 sun in the Antarctic because, solely because we want to show to people navigation, how Scott and Amundsen navigated their way to, to, to the, the south alleged South Pole. pole to, well, yeah. Well, how they allegedly navigated their the, way to, to the, the South Pole. pole. We've, sure. uh, we're going to look at some an image of Mount Rainier because we're going to cover a, um, got some a bit more information to support our view with oh, Mr. perspective, Mr. Unsensible, with yeah, Mr. Nonsensible, Mr. Mr. Nonsensible, Mr. Another confirmation who's, bias yeah, person who's done another video about us. Yeah, because I always remember in his in his that we haven't watched. Yeah, in his previous video that he did, he said that the material slam dunk. Proof. Oh right, slam dunk. Proof, slam dunk yeah, proof yeah. that we're on a ball. ball yeah. You think what? Hold on a minute. How can you have slam dunk proof, proof that we're on yeah. a ball? But anyway, that's, so that, that's about it, really. 
and we got we got a we yeah we do have some you've done got a, a few more done diagrams. a few more diagrams because a lot of people can't un- well a lot of people don't do perspective, perspective yeah. so they can't understand a very simple diagram or they don't want to understand because they're no. biased in their views and perceptions mm. or they only see globe wherever they're looking <clears throat> they, they see globe they can't understand or comprehend what they're actually looking at Absolutely, of course, yeah. When they're out on the on the shore shoreline, overlooking can you, can you imagine a actually body of being, water. Yeah. Can you imagine being with a globe and you're on the shoreline? You've got a telescope and you're both looking through the telescope at the same bloody Top. thing. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. And yet they're telling you, no, that's a curve of water going yeah, no. going over. That's well, what it is. It's a bit like salt. And you think, hold on, you only you're looking at it through the, through this little hole, so you can see it like this, but you can only see water and the boat. Yeah. How yeah. can you see what's going between you and the boat? You yeah. can't see that. Well, it's, it's like when they <laughs> went to Salton on the sea. Yeah. And w- one of the, the boat that went out in, into the, the lake, yeah. I think it's a lake, isn't it? Yeah, big lake. Um, they had like a big, big panel, sh- panel with Stripe. colored stripes on it. And one person was looking down on his camera, which was about so much... So the, high, yeah, about eight ground. feet, wasn't it? It's was quite low. And you could see the people in the boat. So not eight feet, eight inches. Yeah, you could see <coughs> the people in the boat. You could see the panel, the coloured panels, although one strip, the bottom strip, was covered by the water. Yeah, and they hadn't gotten to the horizon. And, and they'll say, look, there you go. It proves that the Earth's curving. Oh, that's a good... Yeah, that's and then if oh, someone sure. else stood next to the person looking... Oh, let me have a look there. Let me have a look there. There, Roger. No, uh, I don't know. The globe head name. Wolfie. 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 Let me have a look through his telescope. So you look through his telescope. And say, uh, Wolfie, if the if it's curving, because you can't see the the bottom strip strip of colour on the on the back. Why is it I can see water beyond beyond the, beyond boat? the boat? So the boat hasn't reached the horizon. horizon. Yeah. And yet you're you're saying that How it's got it already curving? gone over the horizon. If I can see water beyond the and boat, the, and what they'll do is they just will ignore it. Yeah, they'll, the confirmation bias. All they want to see is that uh, bottom colour being cut off, being yeah. hidden. Yeah, that's it. It's the globe. It's the globe. Absolutely, your course. Um, I mean, it's so easy to understand. These people have got mental, mental health, health problems, problems. Yeah. and confirmation bias, as far as I'm concerned, um, indicates somebody does have a mental health problem. Yeah. I mean, really? because they cannot yeah. um, reliably. Um, what's the word understand information that's presented to them in a very objective manner yeah, yeah. anyway let's go on because not my fault people are fucked up is it yeah, you know, no, come no. on don't you can't blame me you can't right. blame us don't can't, blame us we're all we do is we put up a video on youtube and that's what that's all we do don't we yeah i know yeah. so you can't blame us giving you know? our views and opinions absolutely all we do we're not saying we're right or wrong on anything but all we're saying is that people have mental health no problems. problems yeah okay and i'm sure a lot of people agree with that yeah Anyway, come on, let's get on. So what should we do first then? Well, let's let's go to uh, Action Lab. Let's go to Action AL. Let's uh, get over action to Action Lab. Here we go. So rocket launch in a giant vacuum chamber. Well, 10 months ago this video was uploaded mm. by mm. the main man himself. I'm just going to switch off the volume because yeah. we don't need it. No, he, he spends a lot of time with an advert, so we won't yeah, cover so we Yeah, we won't cover the ad, but he's got this super duper. Do we need... To, oh, no, we should, play it, we should play it with sound, actually, shouldn't we, I suppose? Well, I need... From here because i want to oh yeah so yeah from here we'll play it from here with with sound okay so have a little listen to this today and immerse yourself in the star trek universe and join the in-game the atmosphere is absolute pressure right now the reason i'm using the dollar bill printed flash paper is because i'm going to be igniting it with my laser so i need some black pigment that will absorb the light a little bit better and it'll get hot enough so let's shine our laser on it and look at that, it still burns. There's no visible flame, though it just kind of... Yeah, remember, no visible flame. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's, Im- that's important, because whenever you see your uh, SpaceX video of the rocket going up, you know, the reusable rocket, when it separates from the, the, the other rocket the, that goes onto wherever, allegedly, you can see the, uh, the thruster glowing, glowing, yeah, yeah. as if something's burning. Mm. And you see, you do see all those flames as well, don't you? Yeah. And yet he can't get a flame at all in his vacuum no. chamber. Okay. Okay. And why is that? Because you can't. Because pressure. There's no pressure. There's very little pressure. You need pressure in order to have your flame. flame. Without yeah. uh, 
pressure of no a certain kind, I would imagine, <clears throat> uh, there's no flame. But anyway, let's carry on. Kind of disappears into a gas. That's so cool. What's cool with this big of a volume is that the pressure in the chamber actually doesn't change by any measurable amount after it burns. This is because the volume of the gas released is so small compared to the volume of the total chamber. So you can see we're still at low pressure, negative 827 millibar, which is relative to my atmospheric pressure, which is 846 millibar. So the total pressure in the chamber is only around 0.02 atmospheres, which is the same pressure we started with before we burned the paper. This is good because it means we won't increase the pressure in the vacuum chamber from the rocket gases alone. Okay, now that we know it'll ignite in a vacuum, let's make our rocket. To do this, I need something transparent that I can shine my laser through. So let's use a syringe. I'm just gonna put the flash paper inside the syringe and then glue the plunger so it can't come out. So the press. Right, remember, so he's put the uh, flash paper in the syringe. He's um, inserted the syringe, the, the actual, uh, the movable plunger, part, the plunger, and he's gonna super glue it into position. Okay? Super. He's, he said he's, he's gonna super glue it as well. What, the plunger? The plunger, so it doesn't slide out. So you, you think to yourself, well, why would it slide out? <laughs> why would it slide out? Oh, why, why would it well, slide and, out? And also, hmm. another, another thing I'd like That's to... That's interesting. Another, another thing well, I'd... Well, the major part yeah. we've got to point out here. Yeah, another thing I'd like to point out, and that is at the very beginning, he did say that the flash paper contains lots of oxygen. So it can light in a vacuum, it can burn in a vacuum. Mm. So why is he not pushed the plunger all the way down in that syringe? Yeah, why is it he's not um, so pushed all the air out of that, out of that syringe? Because not only is in that cavity of the syringe, not only is there the flash paper, but there is air. air. There's yeah. air inside that uh, syringe. There's pressure. Pressure, okay. So but you've got to bear these in mind. Because when we look at the results, You'll start to think, hmm, mm. something's a bit fishy around here. Yeah, I know, yeah. Well, let's play. Pressure can build up. Okay, got it hanging in there. Completely suspended. So after it's glued, the only way the gas can come out is through the tip of the syringe. Once the gas starts pouring out, it should send the syringe flying in the opposite direction. Now let's try to ignite it by just holding our laser in one spot. Whoa. <laughs> Holy cow, that generated a lot of force. Once the rocket took off... He watches a lot of Batman. Oh, Holy yeah. cow. Oh. Holy cow, yeah. Wham! Bam! It smashed in the wall just into a million pieces. That's so cool. So let's try... A well, I didn't think it was cool at all, you know. <laughs> well, not we, really. We should count yeah. how many times he uses the word cool. cool. Yeah, but he's got to say all those kind of words to uh, to keep his younger audience. Oh, right, yeah. Infused. I'm surprised he's not using the word awesome. Oh, oh that's right, awesome. awesome. Yeah, oh, no, right. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that that, is. Oh, that's I've amazing. seen it every day, every, you know, for the oh, past awesome, 20 yeah. years, but it's still awesome. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it reminds me of the bloke with the cycling. <laughs> and he cycles down this track and he cycles and he does loop the loop. Oh, right, okay. And like people go, wow, that's awesome. And yet you think anyone can do it with a bit of practice. Yeah, I know. It's only, yeah, absolutely, of course, yeah. yeah why it's do not people, awesome. Why do people think that what people do is amazing or awesome or cool or whatever when it just takes a lot of practice, practice that's yeah. all? Yeah. Obviously, anyway. certain things m involve more practice yeah. than anyway, others, you know. On. But um, let's carry on. A little bit bigger syringe and see if we can do it without destroying the rocket this time. Right, so there we go. We actually saw it slowed down. Yeah, sure. But one thing that was interesting is that we could all see some smoke coming out of the syringe, but it took a bit of time for the syringe to actually move. move. Yeah, it took quite a bit of time. Whereas one would have thought that with the, well, with Newton, this Newton bullshit to every action, there's equal opposite reactions. So thrust coming out one side, will induce force going in the opposite direction. So as soon as we see the, if that was true, um, as soon as we see smoke or some kind of thrust coming out one coming out of the syringe, 
the syringe should have moved forward, yeah. but it didn't. It took a while for the syringe to actually move. Yeah. Let's watch that again. Yeah, because there's no resistance to that syringe moving forward. Yeah, so here we go. There's no resistance for the syringe to move forward, to, to prevent the syringe from moving forward. Yeah. So as soon as we see smoke coming out of the syringe, we should see the syringe moving, but we don't. It takes a bit of time. Let's watch it again. There you go. Hey, it worked. <laughs> Look how... Qu well, it, <coughs> no, no, it, it moved. It moved. Yeah, sure. It, not that it worked. Well, what does he mean by it, it worked? worked? Oh, right, you yeah. know, it worked in the it moved well it yeah, will yeah, yeah. we all saw that it moved so in that respect it did work but yeah. the thing is did it work in the manner he thinks it worked well, no i don't think it did now i, I, I can't see how I, it can i personally think why it moved is because the air that was in that little gap within his syringe oh yeah created a, see, a, a differential in pressure. Yeah, now you see the thing because is... Because it's within a yeah, vacuum. Some people would say that there's no air in that uh, syringe anyway because it was sucked out, well, it was with, evacuated by the, the vacuum the flash, chamber. But the flash paper could have prevented, trapped, trapped that air in. Because he pushed it down into it. And I, I think that would be the case anyway. You would have trapped air inside that syringe yeah. which would have changed the whole dynamics, dynamics of yeah. this uh, this demonstration it's it, to me this is a contrivance what i'd like him to do is to actually do this again but actually take the air out of that syringe absolutely yeah sure because one of the things is that if, if everybody remembered from what he said at the beginning that flash paper contains oxygen so there's no reason yeah. why he should have actually have air within that syringe well he doesn't need to have that um, in his understanding he the doesn't. flash paper could just be com compacted yeah basically yeah, it could yeah. just be compacted, compacted in a very small space in the syringe yeah and then he can light it there you yeah. go what's wrong with that but the thing is with this guy is that the, this guy may have actually have done it Paul pushed the plunger in ignited it and it didn't work uh, absolutely. Because he's doing this for YouTube, he's doing it for views. Sure. So he puts a bit of air in it and found, oh look, it does work. Yeah, there you go, I've got my rockets working in it. Yeah, it's, it, and this is exactly the same as Cody. When Cody's Will a model rocket motor work in a vacuum? So this is exactly the same. We had it, um, he took the, uh, let's, we won't play the volume because we don't need to, but this is in vacuum, I hope, yeah, I've got yeah. the right spot. But just watch. It's exciting, isn't it? There. Oh, there you go, yeah. it, it moves. Well, something happens, but it didn't move. It didn't yeah. spin round. Whereas as soon as you put in, put it in a capsule. Yeah. We're uh, there. Here we're we there. Go. So we've got the we've got it here. As soon as he he puts the charge actually inside a capsule. We're there. We're there. Okay. Is contriving the demonstration. Yeah, Maybe and might as well play it when he's. Yeah, so here you go. He's taking. There you go. There you go. So we've got it there. There it is. So we'll just wait for it to go. Because hmm. this is this is all that's going to happen. You know, um, you have got air inside there the charge, and, and, and we get motion. Yeah. You only need a little bit, and then it's, isn't it amazing how how the difference yeah. between having air present and having no, no air, air present. Yeah. That's why. The difference is I, yeah. phenomenal. That's why, I, in my view, if uh, Action Lab, I think, his, I think his name is James, but if Action Lab had compressed that plunger and taken all the air out, it wouldn't have moved. Absolutely, yeah. He, cause when he yeah. shone his torch on the flash paper, yeah. it would not have moved. Yeah, I, I totally would agree with that. He would have just gotten the same there result. There we've done yeah. that one. But uh, where yeah. no motion Good. was observed. So, sorry, Action Lab, I mean, yeah. big fail as far as we're yeah. concerned. We've got so many people who are um, unhappy or um, certainly not consent to accept the rubbish that you guys are pumping out as being proof. Proof, yeah. That they, they may satisfy your bias. Pump bias, yeah. But at the end of the day, they don't satisfy our inquisitiveness. 
really. Yeah, I, know, yeah. I, I can't really say it's a bias on our part because we're we're only wanting for for people to prove their point of view. But um, anyway, so that's uh, that's that one. So yeah. well done. So, so we it's a big fail one. from big uh, fail. So we can click fail. that off. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we click him off. It's crazy, really. What? What? But then that actually, lab is it, sure. Are we? Should we do the confirmation bias while we're here? Well, we can do. Yeah, we confirmation might as well. Bias. As we've been talking about, because um, the thing with when Cody put his, um, when Cody put his charge in a uh, a little capsule of air, and then it. It, he got it to spin around in the vacuum chamber. He's confirming his bias because yeah. that's all he wants to see. Is it moving in in a in vacuum? vacuum? Yeah. He doesn't care how it's moving, but it does move yeah, in a yeah. vacuum, yeah, yeah. which means he can confirm his bias in that rockets work and can propel a vehicle in a vacuum. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, but yeah. we all know that he's got to fudge. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Here the demonstration. So. so Confirmation bias is the tendency to search for, interpret, favour, and recall information in a way that confirms or supports one's prior beliefs or values. values. Yeah, not not facts or not um, knowledge or not anything, but it's beliefs. Yeah, this is the big problem. Yeah. People display, yeah, because it's got to be beliefs. Because if it was factual, there wouldn't be any, there wouldn't be anything to dis disagree. There wouldn't be any bias. There wouldn't be any bias. Well, it's like it's people display yeah. this bias when they select information that supports their views, ignoring contrary information, or when they interpret ambiguous evidence as supporting their existing attitudes. All oh, right, yeah, sure. There you go. Yeah, but without going into it in too much detail, we can give you give people other examples. Examples. So let's go on to um, let's get some images up. Oh wait, there. Let me just get some images up. Get some images up of oxidation. Here we go. Of uh, oxidation, oxidation images. images. Oh, are you talking metal, metallic? Yeah, you could go oxidation. on. Uh, oh, we don't want to go on um, rusting. Oh, you could go on rusting. Yeah. Rusting, rusting, oxidation, we rust. Here we go. Look. Everyone's, everyone knows. So you can go on rust. Here. How rusting and corrosion works. Now a lot of people, yeah. A lot of people, rust is a common name for iron oxide. The most familiar form of rust is the reddish coating that forms flakes on iron and steel, Fe2O3. A lot of people, a lot of these globe heads, will say that the, the iron is rusting because the metal is reacting with the oxygen in the air. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they'll say. Yeah. So they have this confirmation bias whenever they see it. For example, that that will just confirm their bias because they are biased in their 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 views on what what they're what they're observing yeah, I know, or yeah. how the rust has formed. Whereas Peter and myself, we would say that it's due to moisture. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and it's solely due to water moisture um, breaking down breaking down, down the, the material, metal. which is then forming the the substances or the decay the decomposition that you see when you see rust rust yeah that's what we would say but whenever you talk to a, a globey or a science minded person they'll they'll dismiss it they'll dismiss it because they're biased they're biased towards their very science mm. towards their very beliefs yeah i know yeah yeah because yeah they've got mental health problems you know that's another example we've got uh, what else have we got we've got we've got so we've got the rockets we've got yeah. the rockets, rockets working in the working. vacuum Oxidation. Well, you can. You've got other examples. Lead oxide. You've got the oxide on um, lead roofs, for example. Or the copper. 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 The copper. roofs on copper. Third degree. There we get an image up of it. Image up on ver yeah, verdigree. Third, third degree. Third degree. Third degree. There you go. On uh, a copper roof. Images on a copper roof. Yeah. yeah. Lot, Statue, Statue of, of Liberty. Liberty. There. Yeah. Yeah. It's covered, people, in green, it's covered in verdigris, yeah, you know. A lot of people will say oh, it's, it's, it's gone green because it's the oxygen, that's, or it could be the CO2, <coughs> whatever, that's reacting with it. No, it'd be oxygen. It would be the oxygen. Oh, well, that's reacting with the metal they, that's yeah. turning it green. And they <coughs> think oxygen is a constituent of air. There's no proof of that at all, yeah. none whatsoever. So but they'll still think they're biased into thinking in this manner. 
and yet Peter and myself again would just say the reason why the copper which obviously everyone knows copper colour will turn green is simply because of the presence of moisture sure. yeah. and it's moisture that um, decomposes sure. copper the metal yeah. hence you get the Statue of Liberty yeah. which is exposed to all weathers yeah. including water, rain, whatever is covered is green <coughs> and if you think covered in verdigris yeah, and, and if you think we're wrong you've only got to look at a copper ore the colour of a copper ore to know yeah absolutely of course yeah. that all the water is doing is breaking the copper down back to its ore absolutely of course that's yeah. all um, but you know that that's our view that's our opinion we could be right we could be wrong but the thing is is that I don't think we are confirming a bias that we have no, no, no. We're in, in what we're saying, you know, okay, it's oxygen. Some people are saying it's well, prove that there's oxygen in the yeah. air. Prove it. <laughs> but a lot of people, yeah. yeah. But a lot of people. The important thing is a lot of people would dismiss our opinions. Sure. Yeah, they would dismiss out of hand. And uh, another thing is also a lot of chemical reactions. A lot of chemical reactions. A lot of people. Look, if you did a chemical reaction in the laboratory in school or wherever. You totally not think about the moisture that's in the air as being taking part. What 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 does the what does the moisture in the air, for example, um, how does that affect the um, the the experiment or the reaction yeah, that's no, taking yeah. place? Yeah. You know, how does that interfere with it all? Mm. When you look at the chemical reactions, the formula for that reaction, they they they, they don't take into account the the oxygen, the nitrogen, allegedly, oh, right, that's, yeah. that's in the air. They don't take that into account. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, selectively. I mean, yeah, because they're very, they're very selective. They only, they omit it. Oh no, Neil Armstrong. Yeah, when he went, allegedly oh, right, when he was couldn't see any stars. Couldn't see any stars. Oh, I don't recall seeing any stars. Confirmation bias. bias. Yeah, because he's biased. He's confirming his bias yeah. by talking a load of bullshit. By, by dismissing. By dismissing other things. Something that should have stared him right in the face. Because some people said, well, what do you mean you couldn't see any stars, oh. Neil? Come on, you're, you're, the f well, you're the first people to land on the moon and you didn't even bother. No. You allegedly went out. Yeah, sure. You went out the there moon. to the moon. You went all the way there. You landed on the moon and you couldn't even be bothered to look at the night sky. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Even, even have a, like, uh, put, put a, a dark cover over a window oh, right, yeah, to so you can out, to, block, to, out to block out all of the light inside the capsule you didn't do any of that you know what I mean what's the matter with you mate do you yeah, know what I mean know, yeah, yeah. That was crazy, do you know what I mean it's, it's men yeah. mental isn't it it's crazy of course yeah so I mean confirmation bias we're starting to we actually we've heard it so many times before but we've never really been bothered to uh, what's the word understand understand it, it but after talking to these people about um, lots of things about um, the, these rockets, looking at Action Lab doing these rocket thing, thinking, well, hold on, that doesn't prove that a rocket works in a vacuum. No, no, no. And then him coming to the uh, conclusion that it does, and it satisfies him, um, it makes us think, yeah, there you go, he's confirming his bias. He's got a biased view, and he's confirming it with what he's doing. Yeah. You know, because he's selectively are using the information that's available to him mm. and dismissing other parts of the information that's available to him, mm. which is, you shouldn't be doing that. Anyway, let's get on to, uh, let's do some more confirmation bias and let's have a look at... Let's have a look at what? The, the, tw the Antarctica. Antarctica. Now, um, yeah, uh, let's have a little butchers here where it's all on, it's all on this page, isn't it? There we go. So we can get rid of that. Uh, now, we, 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 well, we, watched, bias. We, we watched the video on... Um, the 24 hour sun yeah we watched a, a, a video on the 24 hour sun which was this this was in our last video because we were doing some bit more bit more research into this final experiment shit oh, right. do you know what yeah, I mean bullshit yeah and uh, you know we got this you know we got this video here it wasn't go, the same go. one I did watch one another one exactly yeah. the same but the the camera was blurred and then there I noticed go. that it had there somebody go. had Put it in focus, yeah, anyway. but this one wasn't the, yeah, anyway. the same one. Yeah, so Jaron, you're going to anyway. you're going to travel thirty one. You're going to pay. I oh, know he may have gone for. Three. Yeah, Wolfie's going to keep everyone you're gonna, awake at night time. You're going to travel. Oh, oh. Going to travel all these thousands of miles for for what purpose? Just yeah. to see this. Just to see what, which is what you can see in a video. And then you got to hang out with uh, globe heads. 
talking all you their got, rubbish. They're talking about all their bullshit. Shit, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Trying to convert you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, probably, yeah. Because that's all they'll do, yeah. We know it's a globe. We yeah. know it's a globe, you know. That's and all, yeah, all like. you and me would say is, how does this observation prove, prove the, the shape, shape of the, the Earth? Earth? Do, do you tell me exactly? Yeah, you, anyone who's watching this video, leave a comment below and tell us, okay, we're seeing, as far as we're concerned, this, this is genuine footage. We're not disputing the authenticity of the footage, but... How does this observation, okay, prove without any doubt whatsoever? Because that's what proof is. Because yeah. so, so that you don't have any doubt in you whatsoever. How does this video, the observation in this video, how does it prove the Earth is a globe? Well, it doesn't, does it? It doesn't. All it proves is that at this location, the sun. This is what you observe. This is what you observe. observe. The yeah. sun is moving o yeah. above your head. Yeah. That's all it proves. Yeah. So, w w you know. The only way you can prove that the Earth is a globe is by changing your frame of reference for from your position from the Earth yeah. and changing it so you can look at the Earth. Earth. You've got to leave the Earth, Earth physically. And this is the big problem. Nobody can, yeah. in our opinion. So, it looks like you're buggered. Yeah. You that's why it's just a belief. Yeah. It's only a belief. Yeah. If you really do no, think no, about yeah. it, it's only a belief. The globe yeah. Earth is only an idea. It's this, a belief. Yeah, this is why this observing this information for uh, uh, Who? What? The, the, what, the globe team? The, the globe team. Who like go Wolfie on and all that lot. Where's yeah. Wally? Where's Wally? See, he yeah. could go off just looking for Wally. Yeah, I know. You know? Yeah, yeah. But all, these, might all this is going to do is, is going to confirm their bias. Yeah, it's just going to confirm. Yeah, all it's going to do. More, more information to confirm and their, their bias. bias. The bias is the globe Earth. That's their bias because it means they are um, heavily weighted towards that view as opposed to other views. Okay, mm. so they're biased. Okay, and this piece of information or going out there, the final observation... Okay, we'll just confirm their bias. Yeah, no, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, they've got mental health, health problems. problems. Yeah. You know, and I personally wouldn't want to spend a lot of time with these people because they would be seriously doing yeah. my knotting. Yeah, well, I mean, it must be funny. You know, you, you're travelling on the same plane with these globe heads. With other human beings. beings. Yeah, and all, and all these uh, uh, globe heads all looking out the window. So, wow. Wow, well, isn't it cool? You can, you can see. Can you the, imagine oh, that? Isn't it cool? Yeah. You can see the curvature of the Earth there. No. Hey, Jaron, no, look. You could be sitting. Can you see the curvature yeah. of the Earth? You could be sitting behind Jaron and say, oh, "What's right, yeah. it? Which it bits it? Which it gets it?" Oh, and right. the other one you could be sitting behind. You could be, and you could be hey, saying, "Wolfie, Wolfie, look at the yeah. curvature. Can you see the curvature? Oh, of the I can Earth see the curvature the out there. Yeah, look so at it. This is what these people are going to be like. Yeah. They're going to get it all the time, and then all, all the time, and then all. Uh, and Jaronism and all this lot probably think we should never gone. No, <laughs> Jaronism and uh, Wits it bits it or whoever. Wits it, it gets it. Wits it gets it. Might say, yeah, but it's, it's, it's the window. It's the window that's making it look. But, but they won't have it. They won't have it because they're biased. Because <laughs> they're biased, they've got mental health, health problems. problems. It's like being in a mini nut house. <laughs> but you're on an, air, you're on an aircraft, and yeah, a lot yeah, of the people yeah. there are mad. They've yeah. got they're literally insane. Yeah. They may as well put <laughs> padding all the way along the inside of the aircraft. <laughs> of the aircraft, yeah. yeah, of course. Because oh, because apart from Jaronism, <laughs> which it gets it, and the other kingdom, they've got a little bit more savvy in them. Yeah, all they've the got a little the, bit more savvy. All the others need restraint. All the others need restraints. Absolutely, of course, straight jackets. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's crazy. Anyway, but anyway, anyway, getting back to the point. Getting hand. back to the point. So there's 24 hour sun. See, this is in this some is, locations in Antarctica. Yeah. Now right. this this is something that uh, even th these guys uh, can ask when they go down and have their lecturers talk yeah. to them, because apparently they've navigated all over Antarctica. Oh, apparently. apparently. Yeah. But um, brings us up to um, brings us up to uh, yeah, the race to the pole. The, the race to the pole, 1911-1912. Roald Amundsen and Robert Scott. Scott. Mm -hmm. Robert Falcon Scott. Of course. Now, a lot of people know the story. We, we, we've, we've covered the story ages ago, didn't we? And um, you've always got to remember, when you go to Antarctica, your compass doesn't work. Yeah. Compasses don't work, work. in Antarctica. Because your compass 
needle will always point downwards. Yeah, and it doesn't work. It won't work. It won't work. You, you can't na- help you navigate uh, unless you want to reliably. Nav- unless you want to navigate downwards. Yeah, of course. And the same is true in the North Pole as well. If you go into the northern regions as well, your compass won't work. But anyway, yeah. But instead of going down, the compass goes. Like sure. This, really yeah, fast. you get. Yeah, sure. So you've got um, over hundred years. There was still debate about the events, how well the two men were prepared, how they conducted themselves, what role luck had to play, and at least they were leg- leg- legacies. They both led five-man teams to the pole, though while um, Amundsen's team returned alive and well, Scott's party all died on the return journey. journey. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Anyway. So uh, there's Robert Scott on the right there, and there's Amundsen on the left. And yeah, um, cool. anyway, but we got some lovely photos. Now these are now these are the photos. Now if you watched our video last week, you'd understand why I say how is it possible um, these the plates these photographs are pristine condition. Well, hold on, but this was Amundsen his party at the South Pole. Oh right, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. And yet Scott's photos look a lot clearer. Oh, yeah, Scott's photos look a lot clearer, clearer. than Amundsen's. Amundsen's look a bit more uh, grainier, they don't they? They look about, about the time. Oh, the, yeah, they look about the of time. Of the time. Of the time. Oh, right, yeah, that photo. Scott's look a bit more detailed. Yeah, that, this photo more. could have been uh, played around with or, you mm. know. Anyway. But anyway, because anyway, um, even though I fumbled my, my seasons and my times oh, of the yeah. years... Um, it still is the case that Scott went down to Antarctica allegedly during their summer. Well, this okay. was January 1912. Yeah, in Western, in the North, January, wasn't it? Yeah. Scott and his party at the South Pole by. Oh, sorry, yeah, January. Yeah, sorry, yeah. It's, even I'm getting confused with it because it's the reverse. Yeah, yeah. So they're in January, it's summertime. Okay, yeah, over there, yeah. and what happened was was that uh, the summer was over. They came back. The summer was over. They died, and then you had winter time. Yeah, and their bodies and everything weren't found until the following summer, spring, spring, or yeah, springtime, yeah. springtime, yeah. summertime. So the the camera they used would have had to have survived sub zero Antarctic temperatures. For the whole duration of the winter time, time yeah. and for a few months on either side. And the photographic plates could only have... Uh, and in uh, our could, view... No, the, those photographic plates could not have withstood those temperatures, temperatures of like minus 70. Yeah, that's what... that we've, do, we've done some research. We did a video on our channel some, somewhere. It is yeah. there. Um, and we found that those plates could not have survived those temperatures. temperatures. So we'd love to know how is it possible these photographs actually exist. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can't, yeah. can't, can't, can't believe it, yeah. you know. But anyway. But anyway, um, but apparently they they got to the South Pole. This is the mainstream story. And so our next question to ask, okay, is really um, what margin of error, what margin of accuracy would Roald Amundsen have had in reaching the, the South, South Pole, Pole, as well as Scott himself? Yeah. Because we've got to ask this question because yeah. it's very important, really. So there you go. So Amazon and his companions travelled from their base hut to the pole by ski, with, with, with sledges, sledges pulled by Greenland husky dogs. A sledge meter attached to the sledge measured the miles travelled, just a bit like you if you're surveying. Yeah, the land. sure. If they travelled in a straight line along the same line of latitude, that would have been helpful. But obviously detours were inevitable yeah it was so easy for them to go off course particularly going up the mountains to reach the polar plateau yeah because when you go up the hill you kind of like lose your line of sight as it were you know on the land they were carried on Amundsen steered by compass well really well how on earth and this could correct the detours well how is this possible Amundsen steered by compass and this could correct the details. Now that's unbelievable. How is it possible? When the compass just goes like that. When, when compasses don't work, work in Antarctica. Antarctica. You know, I mean, it's clear from just from reading this little bit of information that it's bullshit. It's total bollocks. Bollocks, yeah. It's total bullshit. We've got, um, wait there, wait there, we've got this part here. Do compasses work in Antarctica? 
Well, well the, the compass. compass uses the magnetic pull of the South Pole, allegedly, but Antarctica is too close to the South Pole to get an accurate compass so reading. So the how could he correct his details? Absolutely. The extreme conditions of Antarctica made it hard, make it hard to use the astrolabe and the sextant. It's hard to see the sun and stars during blizzards. And if you've got 24-hour sun, how you won't even see the stars. You won't see stars. How the fuck in hell did all these people, Amundsen and his Scott. team, Scott and his team, allegedly all get to the South Pole? How did they know they were there? Mm. You know, this yeah. is unbelievable stuff. They couldn't have used a compass. And yet in the information here, they're telling you, you know, they used a compass. Yeah. Yeah. And we've seen other information. What did Scott use to navigate the south to the oh, South Pole? Yeah. Well, he used compasses, apparently. Yeah. Robert Falks and Scott and his team used several methods and tools to navigate to the South Pole. Yeah. Compasses, traditional magnetic compasses, were, were used, used, although their reliability was affected by the Earth's magnetic field near the poles. Well, what does that mean? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Mm. I'm trying to think. Or did they just use them just to get to Antarctica? <laughs> oh, possibly, yeah. yeah. Maybe just use compasses to get to Antarctica. Well, you just don't know what they were doing. Yeah. I bet they don't even know where sextants. they were going. Sextants. Scott's teams use sextants to measure the angle of celestial bodies, like the sun. Well, only the sun, because apparently if you've got 24 hours sun, that's all you can see in the sky. But it would only help them determine their latitude. So you only, if you're, you're all you're doing is looking at the sun's... Yeah, how do you know that your longitude is correct? In, the, yeah. in other words, you're going straight to the South Pole. Oh, but someone, but, oh, because you've also got to think about the tilt as well. You've got to think about, so you've got to t factor in that alleged tilt, tilt as well. Yeah. You know? It all gets complicated Tated. as well, you know. And then you've got chronom chronometers, which are just timepieces, you know. Yeah. You've got to prevent, you've got to make them or house them so they don't freeze up. So they constantly work. So they're constantly working, you know, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Mm. I mean, what are you going to surround, what are you going to have, what, what insulation are you going to use in 1911? Oh, but they may have used wind up. May have. May yeah, have but it could still wind. freeze. It could still freeze. The chronometer oh, right, could yeah, still possibly, freeze yeah. and it can stop yeah. working. Yeah. And then you've got dead reckoning. Okay. Well, I reckon that, uh, I mean, I've not used dead reckoning, dead reckoning. I don't know the technique inside and yeah, out. Yeah, well, I reckon, Robert. But it's just calculating. We, yeah, well, I reckon, Robert, we've been walking for like four hours now, and I reckon if we go, go another hour and a half in that direction, yeah. we'll reach the South Pole. Well, I, I think you're wrong, actually. I think we should be going in that direction because we've been walking for three and a half hours. Actually. No, because we're following the we're following the yeah. But the, when we recorded it, the sun was over there. Look, I've taken re re records. Oh, right, yeah, here's yeah. here's my notebook. Yeah. Rob, Robert, yeah. mate. You know the thing is, is landmarks and observations. Yeah. The I thing mean, is, come on. The, the thing is, these people didn't know where they were going to. No, no one had ever been there. So it's it's okay seeing the landmark. Okay, there's a, there's some hills there. <laughs> so okay, we will go over the hills. And far away. And far away. But the thing is, is that, that where are the landmarks beyond on the plateau? No, they would have been all right to have come back. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, we passed that uh, that mountain that had the black spot on it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We passed that um, uh, a while ago, you know. Oh, so we're on the right track back. Yeah, I know. So yeah. it's good to yeah. come back using landmarks and observations, obviously, yeah. to get back. But, you know, it's, when you think about it logically... The, the the question still asks is really how did they navigate to the South Pole? Yeah. Nineteen hundred and eleven, you know? Yeah. How is it possible they could have done this feat? You know, if they'd have done it maybe in nineteen forty, maybe fifty possibly, possibly. it would have been a lot better. Or even <coughs> um later than that, nineteen seventy. But nineteen hundred and eleven, mm. no radio waves? <coughs> Well, yeah. No yeah, radio yeah. communication. But again, even though there's 24-hour yeah. sun, you could probably gauge uh, using a sextant the lowest point. Or yeah, you could probably sun. gauge the middle, the middle part. Yeah, basically. the middle, the middle part. Yeah, sure. But that still doesn't mean you're in the South Pole. Yeah. On a globe Earth. Yeah. And how do you know that you're there on the South Pole? This is another question. You might, you might just go past the South Pole. Might by about 100 miles. Yeah, I know. You could yeah, be 100 yeah. miles out. Yeah. 50 and miles out. Antarctica. 200 miles out. Antarctica's a large place. Absolutely, of course, you, yeah. You can't correct your detours with a compass. 
Absolutely. So if they got lost, they'll they'd be spending most of their time um, correcting their um, detours. Well, really, well, that's, that, could, that could one reason why Scott could have perished because he was using compasses. Absolutely. Well, how was he? <laughs> but but it makes you think that the whole. I mean, our view is that the whole Scott of Antarctic stuff. All this is just a good story. story. Yeah, no, it, it's yeah. all total bullshit. That's our personal opinions yeah. on this pe yeah. on these pieces of information. Yeah. I think it was just more for, uh, uh, an exploration of Antarctica. That's all it was. Yeah, well, you know that Scott and Shackleton uh, went to uh, went to the kind of coastline yeah, yeah, yeah. of Antarctica. Yeah. Yeah. You know they were there, so we can agree on that. Yeah, it was more of an exploration. Exploration, but going to the South Pole, I mean, we think that's absolute bullshit. Because the I mean, Earth isn't a globe. Absolutely. It, what it could have been is that um, Scott, when he was um, exploring Antarctica, he ca he died on the way back. They oh, got yeah, to a point been, where yeah. they had to come back, and they died. Yeah. And this whole story has been, just been embellished for them to reach the South Pole. Yeah, yeah. You know. Who, Who knows? knows? I don't know, you know. It's not Do my information. I've never put this information no. out as being true, so, you know. Does anybody care? I don't, I don't care. I'm not really bothered. Anyway, come on. So we got that one then. But uh, anyway, so if you if you do go to the... Uh, what's it? South you, if you go to the uh, the uh, final experiment, you know, ask one of the pe people there. How that how Scott and... Oh, Union Glacier yeah, Camp. Yeah, if you're going to Union Glacier Camp, if anyone goes, ask the people there, the knowledgeable people... Ask them how Scott managed to do it, and then ask them to demonstrate how he got there. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, and ask him about those photographic plates. Yeah, and ask them how the fact they used a compass. Yeah, Amundsen. when they don't work. Oh, how Amundsen corrected his detours using a compass, compass yeah, when they sure. don't work. Absolutely, there's so much information that's just total ridiculous. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I.e., all of this. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of it. Yeah, no, it's no. all rubbish. It's all a story. It's all a story, absolutely, of course, yeah. So anyway, so thanks ever so much for that one. So we can click that off. We can click this click off, off as well. Yeah. We can click that off, off as yeah. well. And we can click that, that off. off as well. So what's next then, Peter? Well, we, we, we need to go to... Uh, let's go for some more confirmation bias. For... On well, what? Let's go on Mount Rainier. Oh, yeah. oh, no, you'll like this one. Now, um, this is good, this is... I'm trying to think. Now we did our last video. Our last video um, showed what's his name, Mr. Unsensible, Mr. Nonsensible, who was uh, Mr. Sensible he? with the idiotic mind. Where I've got to find. It. Oh, there he is. Yeah, there, Mr. Sensible. I won't get his video up, but Mr. Sensible. Well, there. the links on that video. Oh, is the link on the video? Yes, you can. Do. Oh, right. Yeah, wait there. More. Where, where's more? More. Oh, there, down there. Uh, yeah, that one. Oh, that one there, yeah. I'll just open link in new tab. There we go. Yeah, we got uh, we we got this guy here who was uh, just well. He's got confirmation bias. He's biased towards his own views. Yeah, and you can tell that instantly because of the title of the video. Yeah, video, video proof, proof the Earth can't, can't be flat. flat. And you, yeah, th this is trouble with these globies, and that that is a big problem with these globies. They think their understanding of the of the world is true. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and yeah. that it, straight away shows to you or indicates to me that these people have got mental health problems mm. because they're unwilling to look at other pieces of information and actually take them on board yeah and understand them just yeah. understand them they're, they're unwilling to do that because yeah. they've got confirmation but they think they're right yeah. on all yeah. of their views well, it's like this guy if this guy can't understand how the top of everest can be lit by the sun by the sun downwards and you know and the shadow that we see moves downwards he yeah. can't understand yeah. but imagine a seesaw okay imagine a seesaw you've got the sun on one side you've got the mountain that casts the shadow and you've got the Mount Everest on the other when the sun goes up the shadow moves down oh well, yeah. you yeah. know and when the sun goes down the shadow moves up yeah, no, yeah. I mean to me, that seems quite reasonable. <laughs> yeah, no, no. So, are, are, are we are we saying that the Earth's not a globe, but it's a seesaw? No, I'm not saying the Earth's a seesaw. I'm just trying to help help people understand how to um, interpret this video. Yeah, no, yeah, That's yeah. all. I'm not saying that the Earth's a seesaw. I'm just saying the Earth's a level yeah. plane. 
But on this guy's video, he shows uh, an image of Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier, there, there we, we go. go. He's, he's got this. Now, he says that the this can only happen, this proves the the, the globe. Yeah. Um, because of the, the earth curved, the ball earth moving around, rotating around, the sunlight can striking the earth can light up the bottom of the clouds yeah. and can shine on the tip of the mountain, the top of the mountain, under the clouds, and cast a shadow yeah. on the underside of the clouds. Mm. This is what he's saying. Yeah. Now, we we would say that this guy is confirming his bias. Yeah, sure. That's so all he's doing. He's confirming his bias towards the globe Earth. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm trying to think where, where best to go from here because we've got... Well, we is it's our understanding that this an uh, an observation like this can be seen on on a, on a, a level flat, Earth. Level Earth. Now there are two, as far as I'm concerned, there are two um, explanations how this oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. how this image can occur on a yeah. level plane. There's there's two. Oh, let me show one of um, them. There's two explanations. Oh, one of them was from one uh, of them was from uh, Bozo Bloker, Bizo Bloker, Bizo Blo was it Bizo Bloker, yeah. the D I T R H. Yeah, and uh, this was this video here. We'll just switch off the music. This is D I T R H video, and this guy's got um, this guy's got this lamp. He's got this lamp there, okay, and shining down on a piece of cardboard that chop piece of triangular card okay uh, let's see so he's going to try it wait there so can't have it up here all day so the result so there you go you you've got sorry I just got to say this so you've got shadows under clouds proof flat earth Oh right, well, yeah, so you sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, so so you, you got, got bias in, on on the other side, side of yeah, course. No, yeah. You know, we're we yeah, we're just we're just being open minded here, of course, yeah. Well no sure. we're not being open minded, we're just saying that it can occur on a flat earth. Yeah, it can occur. Well, we're not saying it does. We're saying it can occur on a flat, flat earth, earth yeah. okay. You've got to listen to what we say. We're not proving the shape of the, the earth. earth. We yeah. know we can't prove the shape of the earth. Yeah. It's just our opinion the earth is a level plane. Yeah. We could be right, we could be wrong. If you think we're wrong, you need to prove to us that we're wrong. Mm. That's yeah. all we're saying. Mm. Anyway. Okay. But anyway. Not so, confirming your own bias. Not confirming your own bias, right. of course. So let's just zip this across. So he's got the torch there. There's his torch, torch light. And it's shining down on a... Uh, a cardboard triangle which simulates the mountain obviously yeah. and he's got um, a shelter made up of cardboard I can't think of any yeah. other word to describe to, it to simulate a layer of cloud to simulate the layer of cloud so what he does and he's got this in his garage okay and what he's going to do he's going to slide he's going to slide the light backwards yeah okay when he gets and does it he's going to slide the light back Here along the floor here he goes. Here he goes. There we are. So he's sliding the light back along the floor. You can see the light, you know, obviously reflecting from the floor's surface. And he's going to shine the light on the uh, cardboard mountain, as it yeah. were, and put the camera behind. There you go. And we oh, can, look. We can clearly go. see there the um, shadow. The cast, same effect. The same effect. We can, we'll agree with that. And there's yeah. a cat in the in the shot as well so now our view as to why this happens is simply that well we think in this situation the reason why you're seeing the shadow on the underside of that card is because of the light is reflecting off the floor yeah and it's going up you know it's you know you know striking the bomb bouncing up and hitting the, the roof the underside roof of that cardboard uh, whatever you call yeah. it, canopy. Yeah. Okay. So, in order to apply that to the Mount Rainier um, uh, images, which is this one here, we're on the, uh, we're on uh, this is amusing the shadow of Mount Rainier, Rainier. the amusing planet, yeah. and in order to account for this image, what we could say um, when we've looked at that video before is that the light from the sun bounces off 
a reflective surface of of the earth like water like water and strikes the the, the mountain and the clouds mm. so that's a feasible explanation yeah i can't knock it nora mentioned it as well in our last yeah. Yeah. In, in our last video um, I can't. I can't knock it. It's a feasible. It's a possibility. And so, so it's possible. So we we need to, because we often thought that when it came to sunrises and sunsets, red sky at night. Oh right, well, yeah, Whether yeah, it's possible yeah, the have, sunlight yeah. sh strikes off, reflects yeah. off of oceans and stuff, you know. Yeah, but we need to go into our. But our, there is another explanation. Yeah, we will need to go into our uh, explanation because we'll cover some information that will that will coincides with this observation yeah sure so what do we need to look at then do we need to look at oh you did a, you did your uh, diagram oh, oh i did it now i did another diagram and in just to, all this it's only a diagram just to get the point across that's all it's there for but you've got the sunlight on the horizon sunset obviously the sun is at the lowest point in the sky from so i'm, I'm looking from the observer's point of view Okay? Mm. I'm not looking from anyone else's point of view. I'm not looking from the clouds' point of view. I'm not looking from an aircraft's point of view. I'm looking, for the, I'm looking from the observer's point of view. If I had a camera, you can see the sun on the horizon. Okay? Lowest that point, lowest the point sky. in the sky. Obviously, yeah. The horizon is where the sky meets the land. Yep. Yeah? Yep. So if the sun is on the horizon, the sun has got to be in the lowest point in the sky from, from the observer's perspective, perspective from the observer's frame of reference, reference. whatever your words phrase you want to call, call it. it now with the sun being at the lowest point in the sky visibly you can see it okay you don't need to prove it because it is okay from the observer yeah okay the sun's light obviously on the horizon you can see it the sun so the sun's light must be um, traveling directly towards you it must be connecting to you mm. for you to see the sun well, you can see it can't you? you can see it so there's no reason why the sun sun's light can't radiate upwards as well mm. everything above your head can be lit up by the sun by the sun if you had a big projector screen behind you and you're looking at the sun on on a on a sunset you had a big projector screen above you clear sky and you could see the sun on the horizon do you not think that the projector screen above you, you'd be able to cast a shadow on that projector screen? Mm. Do you not think that you can you could do that? Because the sun's light radiates upwards as well. Therefore, there's no reason why the sun's light cannot um, strike clouds that mm. are even 20, 30, are higher 000, than you. That are much higher. There's no reason at all. Yeah. And this is what we so we've got our cloud layer on the top. And the yeah. arrows just represent the sun's light, the direction of sun's light. Radiating you know, out. Radiating out in all directions that you can see. You know, yeah. This is what we see. This is something that I would say is a reflection of the real world. Real world experience this mm. is. Yeah. So, oh, oh, yeah. I've, I've, I've got, for some reason I've got Vic on there. Oh, that's because. Oh, I know, oh, I know what I've done. Yeah, wait there. Need and then I need to go back. Sorry about that. And so we've got it here as well. Look, we've got a, a, an image here of a sunset. Okay. Mm. And all I've done is drawn lines, lines, okay, radiating out from the sun that indicate the direction that light is striking. It's striking mm. in all directions. Yeah. So it will strike above you. Okay. And you've got three miles to the visible horizon. Right. If you're five feet, seven inches tall, it's about three miles to the visible horizon. Mm. Okay. Not far. But the sun's approximate distance from the observer, oh. okay, direct, what, what, as the crow flies. Well, no, no. Oh, no, sorry. Not as the crow flies. But the sun's approximate distance from the observer, from you to the point where the sun is directly above your head, yeah, that's that's the better way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's greater than four and a half thousand miles, and this is something that we'll we'll uh, explain. Yeah, absolutely, of course. Because yeah. in my understanding, this is what throws a lot of globe heads out, and that is the visible horizon. If you're on the shore, is only three miles away, mm. whereas the sun is way further, much much further. If we get that image up on um, Mount Rainier for example. Ah, uh, that would be on here. 
Now Mount Rainier has a certain height. If we were on the peak of that mountain, we would be able to see, well, if we were just under the layer of cloud, yeah, or yeah. I don't know whether the peak is just under the layer of cloud, but if the peak is just under, yeah, the peak's just under the oh, layer Oh, just of cloud, under, yeah. We would be able to see the sun from yeah. where we are. Yeah, so there's no reason why you but can't have a shadow cast on the clouds. clouds yeah. But the visible horizon from the top of Mount Rainier isn't three miles. No, the the visible horizon from Mount Rainier is 200... Yeah, we've done it, yeah. Yeah, we've done it, it's 236 kilometres. Because the height of Mount Rainier is 4,389 metres. So you'd get distance to the horizon is 236 36. kilometres. Yeah. So, like you say, if you're at the top of Mount Rainier and you're looking out to the horizon, 236 kilometres to the to the visible horizon. horizon. Okay. Yeah. And then you see the sun on the horizon. Yeah. On the horizon. But the sun is much, much, much further than away. That. Absolutely, of course. And it's in, uh, it's at the lowest point in the sky. sky, lowest point of sky. I can't see how anyone can disagree with that. So let's have a look and see how far the horizon is, uh, the visible horizon is at Mount Rainier. Right. Okay. So we've got uh, yeah, we've got Mount Rainier here. So th just to give people an idea where it is, there's there's Washington, United States, east yeah. east coast, west coast. Sorry, west coast. And you've got, um, let's go, so Mount Rainier, Mount Rainier. From Where is that? Two, two, two kilometres, yeah, it's there. Yeah, so you've got, you've got 50 kilometres. Yeah, you want to go way out. Yeah, I know, yeah, I don't want to go out that much. 100 kilometres, otherwise you'll lose everything there. Didn't we? We'll just move it over. Didn't we say that, um, yeah, it went to a certain town. Yeah, it went to a certain town. We went to... We went to... Uh, Warden. Warden. Warden there. But if you go a little bit further to the next... If you go to... Ritzville. Ritzville. Ritzville there if is... Yeah, we want to get... Let's get rid of that. So you've got Mount Rainier there, and you've got Ritzville, just on the edge of the screen there, Ritzville. And that is roughly about... That is no less than 236 yeah, kilometres yeah. away. That's how far you would be able to see from Mount Rainier. From you wouldn't Mount be able to see any further. Any further. So if you, if you were here, I don't know, if you were here, Hot Springs, for example, over you here, wouldn't see it. you wouldn't be able to see uh, Mount Rainier at but all. where's the sun, though? Now, where would the sun be? Of course, at sunset, if you was at the top of Mount Rainier. Rainier. Now, this is a good question. Or where would the sun be overhead? Head. Sorry, if yeah. you, if at a sunset, if yeah. you was at Mount Rainier, because with this we don't really need to know how high the sun is. Yeah, we don't need to know how don't high the sun is because the sun always f abides by the laws of perspective. perspective. It will always go down towards the horizon when you move away from yeah. it, yeah. or whether when the sun moves away from yeah. you, one of the two. So we've got I don't know which page is it is it that one no. No, it's not that one. I've forgotten which. Oh, yeah, there, you go. there you go. Oh, you want time and date? Oh, time and date. Now we've got. So what we've done is that we got onto we got onto time and date. Yeah. Okay, just to give us an idea on the sun's location. It's only an idea, just general idea on, on the sun's location. If you were at um, at the top of Mount, Mount Rainier, Rainier, okay, during a sunrise. During a sunrise, okay. So the sun rises in the east, okay, sets in the west. Yeah, we've got a quite a generous uh, margin of error yeah, there. Yeah. So we can say that uh, west side, east, sorry, west side of uh, USA is where Mount Rainier is. So it's there where the pointer is. Yeah. You can see that. Now the sun f during the sunset would roughly be there. just where where it is there uh, in the in the image there. So if we go back to the the di the uh, DTIRH is. I don't know if I can get that that. Oh, um, no, I can't. I can't bottom. get it, can't get it bigger. If we go back to that DITRH's video on the garage floor and it's reflecting, it's quite clear. It's quite clear that according to time and date. Yeah, go on. The sun is over a body of water. Yeah. So the sun's light could actually reflect, reflect bounce off, off the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, the sun's light could bounce off the Atlantic Ocean and strike the underside, the of, underside clouds. of clouds. It's, it is possible. 
it is possible. Now, the only way we can... On a flat earth. On a level earth. Uh, level earth. The only way we can debunk uh, or try to debunk uh, DITRH's viewpoint regarding sun's light reflecting off of no, that's bodies not, of water... He's, he's not extinct. Yeah, but he agrees with that point, though, doesn't he? He agrees with that position, otherwise he wouldn't what, have uploaded... What, it bounces off water? Yeah. I don't think he said that, did he? But it's his, no, I mean, it's on his said, channel. It, no, he's just yeah. it's saying that the observation can account, can be... Done carried out on a flat surface. Yeah, sure. He's not saying. Oh, sorry, why. right. Oh, he's not saying why. It's, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's that's you and me, isn't it? Of course. Do apologise. But if you were say in Poland or Germany, for example, yeah. there's no body of water that is to the east, east. of you yeah. for a long, 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 long way. And if you don't see red sky, red sky in the morning, yeah. isn't it? If you don't see that, then you can probably. That would be supportive. An indication, that yeah. would be an indication that you do the sun's light does reflect off of water, water mm. surface. Yeah, it does do that. Well, it can't reflect off land, can it? It can't reflect off land as well, can it? So there's, you know, if you don't see red sky in the morning in Poland or in Germany, then you know that the sun's light is likely to not bounce off a body of water mm. on the Earth. Yeah. Okay. But, now, then, but then the sunlight might uh, reflect off snow over Siberia. Well, well, I mean, it's possible, but... Well, I mean, it's possible. It's possible. Well, white reflects. Huh? Sure. Well, anyway. Um, well, but anyway, um, so the, the sun's... If you getting back to, to the point, if you was at the top of Mount Rainier, OK, and you could see the sun on the horizon, the sun's overhead position... Is there. ...would be th there. And yeah. that is roughly miles um, away. Miles, it's miles away. In fact, you want the other, it's we've, the other. we've in fact we've got the page up here. It would be roughly seven thousand four hundred and fifty-six kilometres away, because it's it works out roughly to be in uh, the in the Azores, in yeah, the Azores well, region on that uh, line on of that, longitude. On that line of longitude, yeah, it's roughly on the island of Z Azores. Okay, that's where the sun's position would roughly be. Okay, overhead, overhead position. Okay, mm. so if you was on the Azores, the sun would be roughly overhead. Well, whereas if at the same time, if you was in Mount Rainier, you'd see the sun rise on a clear sky. Obviously, oh, obviously it depends on the time of year as well. Obviously, it depends on the time of year. But you get the gist of what we're talking about. So, um, what where do we need to go from here? So, when we, if we go back to his Mount Rainier, uh, the, uh, you can go on his video. Oh, his yeah, video. That one there. So, what we're seeing here is Mount Rainier, which is four, four and a half thousand meters tall. Roughly, yeah. If you were on the top of Mount Rainier, the, the visible horizon would only be 236 kilometers away. Yeah. Whereas the sun that you can see, the overhead position, kind of thing. If, if someone else was at, uh, in near if the Azores and the sun was overhead, they would be seven, seven and a half thousand kilometres away from you. Yeah, absolutely, of course. And this is something why, and this, and the, to me, this is this explains why the sun could be so far away and be so low in the sky at the same time. Well, yeah. Yet still be able to light up the underside of clouds. clouds. Yeah, because like we've said. The sun is at the from the observer. It's only from the observer's point of view. We're not we're not looking at, at it from another frame of reference or somebody else's point of view or whatever. From the observer's <clears> point of view, if the sun is on on setting, if the sun is setting or rising, and it's on the horizon, okay, so it, the sun is located at the lowest point in the sky. Hmm. You know, yeah. I I can't see how anyone <clears> can disagree with that statement. Oh, but but the thing is, it's thousands of kilometres away. Absolutely. For it, for the sun to be overhead, you need to be thousands, seven, thousands of kilometres away. away. You know, and this is something that a lot of people don't take into account, i.e. Globies. Globy people just don't want to take this into account. That's why they're always saying, but, oh, why, can, why can the sun light up the bottoms of clouds then when it's always above the clouds? Oh, right, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, from the observer's point of view at a sunset we could say that it's not above the clouds because it's the, at the lowest point in the sky yeah. remember you're the observer 
you see the sun on the sun on the sun on the horizon during the sunrise sunset and you're the one that sees the clouds being lit up by the sun. sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look up and you see the aircraft being lit up by yeah, the sun. Yeah. Not somebody else. They wouldn't see all that. Yeah, <laughs> and yet if, you if they're at a different location. Yeah. And if you travelled further towards the sun, you'd start be looking up at the sun. Because the sun would rise in the sky. Oh. It would go up because you're up getting closer to it. Absolutely, because you're getting closer to the Azores, which means the sun. You're getting to a point. Yeah. Huh? So if you go on your diagram, my diagram, your, your other which diagram, one? That one there. That one here. This yeah, one here. That one here. You know, if you're an observer, if you're this black dot, you will observe the sun to be up at the sky, and then as it moves away, you you're looking down. Yeah. This is this is really when you think about it, this is the natural observation of the natural the world. world. It's not. <laughs> yeah, I know. You yeah, know, yeah. It, I can't. I for, to be fair, I'm. I think I'm mad explaining this to people yeah, because know, yeah. it's just ridiculous that in this day and age I'm having to teach people how to observe things in their natural, natural environment. environment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but they, a lot of people want to confirm their bias for sure so they, don't, they yeah, want a lot to of people dismiss got, all this a lot of people got mental health, health problems, problems yeah. how many times I don't why should I have to tell people why should I have to tell people that when the sun's above you you're looking up and when the sun's moving to uh, a sunrise or sunset for example so let's say a sunset you're lowering your head you're tilting yeah, your head down downwards. and you're looking straight out so the sun's position in the sky has lowered yeah. from the observer's perspective yeah. from the observer's frame of reference why can't you understand that <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. when everybody does it <laughs> yeah. you know I mean it's absolutely ridiculous and, you know? and the irony is that a lot of globeheads would use this diagram that we've put together and they'll say it's wrong and say but how can the sun um, how can the sun's light uh, how can the sun be over over the clouds and yet the sun's light pass through it? But you, the, if the sun's on the horizon, you can see the sun, which means the sun's yeah. light is reaching you. It's lighting up your face. Yeah. Light from yeah. the sun comes in straight lines. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, <laughs> yeah, but the, these these globeheads would look at this diagram and think, but this is this is why it can't be flat. Because what they do is they extrapolate this this diagram yeah. to however long, and the sun will always be above the clouds. But what they're failing to take, what this doesn't take into account, is perspective. It doesn't. This this diagram, this diagram doesn't does take not into take account into account perspective. perspective. Yeah, we, we've not we've not and we can't factor perspective into this diagram. diagram. And this is what the globe heads uh, dismiss. Yeah. They dismiss perspective. Whereas, whereas this diagram, you can accept perspective to exist in the diagram no, no, or yeah, to be de yeah. de de uh, portrayed in the diagram. Sun on the horizon, and the light comes across the water. Yeah, no, yeah. Cuts yeah, across the yeah. water to reach the shoreline. Yeah. And you're standing there, and you can see the sun. The only, you know, time, the only time you'll isn't get... Isn't it amazing? You even see the sun's reflection on the water's surface, yeah, no, which yeah. shows that the, the, the sun's light runs parallel well, to the oh, water right, yeah, surface. That's a good point, yeah. That's a good point. You know. But what's interesting is that the only time you'll get the, the red, red sky in the morning or red sky at night is when there's breaks in clouds. Absolutely. You need so to allow yeah. the sun's light of course, yeah. to pass yeah. through. Sure. Because the sun is affected by perspective, but its light isn't. I, I, feel, like, I feel like we're, we're at... Uh, I feel like that we're teachers teaching kids... No, but it's doing just doing a video like this and explaining this, oh, or right, trying yeah. to portray it in diagrams glow pads. to globeheads. I feel as if they're, they're children. No, oh, yeah, but but you're and fine. And we've got to treat them as children so they understand. What like banging their heads against a brick wall? Oh well, yeah, because they just don't understand. They just don't want to get it because they've got a bias. They've got a bias. You you know, it's not my so they problem. They dismiss this. They dismiss yeah. perspective. It's not my problem that you you globeheads out there have got a fucked up in yeah. the head. Yeah. We asked one person. We asked one person about what what what's what studies have science done with perspective. Yeah. And then he come the guy comes up with, 
Well, they've made computer games. <laughs> I like computer games. Oh, well, well, fucking hell. <laughs> but what about in the natural world? Yeah. But how, how does a computer game simulate or can, can portray? How can Fight the Flat Earth's computer <laughs> simulation yeah, factor in a visible horizon that's three miles away and yet there's an, a celestial object that is overhead somewhere that's f over four and a half thousand kilometers away. Yeah. Seven thousand kilometers away. Yeah, from an overhead position. How can his computer factor it in? Yeah. How is it? Yeah. And yeah, I know, I know, it's just unbelievable that these it's crazy. people, these people are cannot crazy. Um, understand s simple ideas. The, well, the real world. The real world. Because, yeah. you know, I mean. You know, I well, think I mean, we've uh, I think we've done it really. Yeah, I think we've uh, done it as well. Have we not? Yeah, we have. Have, done, yeah. have we done it all? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, we've done it. Yeah, yeah, sure. But uh, you know, I mean, let us know what you think. If you let us know if you can understand these diagrams. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when you compare them to the real, when you look at the real world, yeah. when you look at a sunrise, for example, you know, is this what you see, or is um, or a sunset? Is this what yeah. you see? You know, because I would probably think, well, this seems pretty in line with what I see. Yeah. You know, this right. does, you know. But uh, if you think it doesn't, then please let us know. And then you can let us know what mental health problem you've got. You know, we'd really like to know, you know, whether you've yeah, got... I know, to, I, know we'd, I know you'd be deluded, of course. Yeah. And you've got confirmation bias. And, and you've, you're psychotic. I mean, the worst thing is, is that these globe heads um, think they're right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the, it, it, the the conceitedness of these people is just staggering. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. It really, it's unbelievable yeah, but, but how they, conceited they are. But they don't do perspective. They don't do perspective because they can't they can't quantify it, study it. They can't do calculations with it. They can't do it in the natural. And it world. doesn't match their globe. Yeah. It, they'll start well if they it, they'll their globe. start realizing oh all oh, oh, what yeah well I suppose the earth could be uh, could be flat from the observer's point of view can it really you know yeah. but uh, you know I, I mean you know I've got me I there's can, no there's no hope there's no hope for these globies that's yeah, for no, sure yeah. I can imagine you know. some of them one of them will uh, leave a comment saying oh look they're even using time and date dot com that's based on the globe oh right yeah oh right yeah they're even using that that's based but on we the can travel to the Azores on a flat Earth. And notice that the sun is overhead, and then travel seven and a half thousand mile kilometres away the following day to experience sunset or sunrise. Absolutely, yeah, of course, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. You can go to the Azores, uh, Azores, um, one one morning and or one one day and notice the sun's overhead, yeah. and then quickly zap yourself over to over we to can do it the Mount Rainier day. we can do it the following day following day at the same time yeah. and you can be at Mount Rainier enjoying a sunrise yeah, no, yeah. You know, I mean, and you can still think the earth is a level plane absolutely yeah this is the thing at the end of the day there's no proof that we're on a ball, ball. there's none, none whatsoever. whatsoever people just think it yeah. and they, they, they confirm their biased view all, those, all of the time with evidence evidence, evidence. that supports the idea yeah, yeah. The Earth is a ball. The Earth is a globe. Yeah, come on, then, let's Only go. the idea, but there's no proof that yeah. the Earth is beyond all doubt whatsoever. Well, we and wouldn't it's be here if it, was, if it was a globe. We wouldn't be here. Yeah, I know. That's why these people don't. You know, I don't understand these people. You know, people going to the moon on Moon Base Alpha. You know, going for holidays. Yeah, I know. Of course, there'd yeah. be people paying to have. Uh, uh, Zero G in space. They'll, they'll not be in Earth's atmosphere. People will be space. going. Yeah, people will be going on uh, on rides from one one place like New York or wherever, so some place in um, Utah or somewhere, flying all the way up out of orbit, yeah, yeah. low Earth orbit. Okay, yeah. and then coming back down in Australia. Africa or Australia. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You know, but these things aren't happening. happening. Yeah. Why? <laughs> There's a lot of people out there with money who can do that kind yeah, of thing, know, you know, yeah, yeah. but they're not doing it. The, the nearest they've got is Jeff, Jeff Bezos going up on his blue horizon and coming back down again. Yeah, I know. Yeah. High altitude flight, that's all they've done. Yeah. Go up, 
and come back down, down again. Yeah. What's the point of that? Because yeah. what so goes I mean, up must come down. Absolutely. What is the point of that? Yeah. Absolutely, of course, yeah. So there you have it. So yeah. let us know your views anyway uh, below in the comment if you want to. And always remember till next time, if something doesn't make sense, like thinking the Earth is, is a ball, is a globe, oh, spinning. Well, <laughs> thinking it's the oxygen in the air that reacts with the iron to create rust. Thinking there is oxygen in the air as a constituent. Oh, right, well, yeah. Of course. Not taking into account the nitrogen that's allegedly in the air uh, that takes part in chemical reactions when you do them in air. Oh, my, well, yeah. Sure. Or even thinking or that water is made of hydrogen oxygen. Yeah, or even not not uh, or omitting the water mod being migrated during the electrolysis. Absolutely, of course. Or, or thinking that white light is made up of RGB. I mean, that's oh, well, a classic, yeah. one, classic that is. one. That one. Another claim, scientific claim right. that can't be proved to be true. Yeah. And they've only got evidence to support yeah. that view. Yeah, I can see us using that that term confirmation bias quite a lot more. Oh, yeah, sure. Once you understand so it, these globe heads. I mean, it's all total rubbish. You know, yeah. there's there's no reason why the only reason why people like globe heads understand their world in ideas is because they don't know what the real world is. Yeah, they, they haven't yeah. a clue. Yeah. That's why they like their models, their diagrams, their their diagrams, their, their, their calculations, yeah. their mathematics, yeah. because it's all is it's all in their head. head yeah. It's that, and that's where they don't they don't like you, the real world. Yeah, you can just imagine. I can understand why. Yeah, you can just imagine James Clark Maxwell many years ago when he says, uh, "Michael, Michael." Yes, James. I've 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 done it. I've done it. James, tell me what you've done. Light is a wave. Really? Wow, that's unbelievable. I've mathematically shown that light is a wave. Look at my formula. So that means my whole theories on electromagnetism are true. It's crazy. It's mad, isn't it? It just you know? exists up there. Yeah, in they're, his just, head. they're just ideas, you know. Ideas. Yeah, sure. It's, it's, it's fucking crazy. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We're living in mad times, times with mad, mad people, people. Yeah. all around. Madness. Psychotic yeah, people. Anyway, on that note. See you later. Bye. Ta da. The Earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat. Everywhere it's flat.